Welcome to our presentation and thank you for watching. My name is Barkley Trimble. I am the superintendent at Mammoth Cave National Park. We are excited to share some early conceptual ideas about our Land and River Trails Management Plan, which will enhance our above ground trail networks at the park. We hope this recording will help provide background information on the plan and how to stay involved in the planning process. The Land and River Trails Plan is in the early stages of development. What you can see in the materials that we have produced so far, and you can find at the web address on your screen now, are ideas that the park's planning team have developed with much consideration of protection of the park's resources balanced with visitor enjoyment. The trail proposals you are about to learn about are preliminary. They have been thoughtfully prepared and our staff have walked these preliminary trail alignments to determine feasibility, but right now they lack input from you, the trail user who has close connection with these places. We need your feedback to improve these designs and more closer to an implementable trail plan that can protect park resources and provide you what you want to see in the park's trails. We are listening and we really want your input. Please visit the website on the screen to submit comments on the preliminary designs. The website is parkplanning.nps.gov backslash mammoth trails. Here is an overview of the presentation. First, I'll provide an introduction on why the park plans the way we do and what we hope to protect when we undertake planning projects. Then I will present on why the park needs a land and river trails plan and what we hope the plan will accomplish, including preliminary strategies and potential trail alignments. Then I will present a little background on the plans process how we've gotten to this point and where we hope to go next. At the end of the presentation, we'll show you how to learn more about the plan and share your feedback and thoughts about the preliminary trail proposals. First, our introduction. Before we discuss the need for this plan, we'd like to start by highlighting the role Mammoth Cave National Park serves as a part of the national park system. The National Park Service preserves a unique and important landscape and provides access to these resources. We plan for today in addition to the future. That's corridor mission and every decision that we make in the park. The purpose of Mammoth Cave National Park is to preserve, protect, interpret, and study the internationally recognized biological and geological features and processes associated with the longest known cave system in the world. The park's diversified forest, karst landscape, the green and Nolan rivers, extensive evidence of human history, and to provide and promote public enjoyment, recreation, and understanding. In addition to our remarkable cave system, our trails network through diverse forest and river landscapes is quite amazing and is becoming more popular over time. When we start our planning and decision-making processes, we need to begin by addressing the question, what are we managing for? The answer to that question helps drive our vision and goals for the future and frames our objectives. At Mammoth Cave, we have park significant statements and fundamental resources and values that provide some of that scaffolding. Significant statements describe the resources and values that are so important to our collective story as a country that warranted this place being set aside for all generations as a special place. The fundamental resources and values are those resources and values that contribute to that significance. They are the rare, unique, and exemplary features that we are charged with protecting and preserving at the park. Our fundamental resources and values include our world-class karst, our underground time capsule, 12,000 years of human interaction with the land, scientific exploration, and discovery. Some might hear this list and think only of our underground resources, but what happens above the ground has a distinct impact on the underground resources here at the park. There is a deep interconnectedness between all of our resources. Additionally, fundamental resources and values include biodiversity, 
natural resource quality and function, and opportunities for connections to the resources. While we are discussing those resources, we are thinking today and for the next 50 years and beyond that. How can we make sure the fundamental resources within the park are preserved and enjoyed? Let's take a closer look at why the park is undertaking this trails plan now. Currently, the park manages approximately 82 miles of land trails and roughly 30 miles of water trails. The land trails are all open to hiking, while about 17 miles are open to biking and around 53 miles are open to horseback riding. There is just over a mile of ADA accessible trail at the park. The park recognizes the need for a park-wide trail plan for a variety of reasons. The park needs this plan because, first, there is an inconsistent trail design and maintenance standards across existing trails. Like most national park trail systems, many of our trails follow old roadbeds that were not designed for hiking, biking, or equestrian use. As a result, some of our trails provide great experiences for users, while other trails are not up to sustainable standards to support longevity of trails. The top right image is an example. Landscape fabric coming up to the surface indicates poor trail design and standards. Second, erosion, trail widening, and trail braiding detract from trail longevity and input both natural and cultural resources. We see this throughout the park, especially on our backcountry trails. Third, visitor use conflicts and crowding on trails detract from high quality visitor experiences. We have seen increases in use on our trails and we want to think ahead to ensure that the experiences on the trails are positive. Lastly, there are limited opportunities for neighboring communities to access the park through multimodal transportation. There are a number of trail opportunities that could increase folks' ability to enter the park without a private motorized vehicle, and we want to support that need. Left unaddressed, these issues will continue to impact the park's resources and the quality of the park experience and not adequately meet the needs of our visitors. Here are four more photos of the inconsistent and unsustainable trail designs which are negatively impacting our other park resources. This image shows a trail that is about one or two feet lower than the land next to it because of erosion and an unsustainable trail. This image is an example of a very deep and muddy trail. This type of erosion above ground impacts our underground resources by negatively impacting water quality which flows directly into the underground cave system. Plus, no one likes a muddy trail. This image shows a trail that has been destroyed due to erosion and the creation of a new trail next to it. Having multiple trail routes increases the impact of users on the natural and cultural resources. This image shows an attempt to stabilize a trail that is being washed out and eroding severely. I'll briefly discuss what we expect the plan to deliver. The goals of the project include provide management guidance and direction to increase trail resiliency under changing climatic conditions and minimize maintenance needs while staying within park personnel and budgetary constraints. Protect natural and cultural resources through sustainable trail construction and management practices. Increase accessibility options for the park's network of trails. Enhance partnership opportunities for trail stewardship and connectivity with community trail networks. Provide varied trail and backcountry camping opportunities to include key points of entrance north and south of the Green River. Address facilities to support trail access, i.e. restrooms at parking lots and trailheads, reduce crowding at boat launches, hitching rails, etc. And finally, improve visitors' understanding and stewardship of resources. Overall, we expect several outcomes as the future plan is implemented. We expect the experience of our trail users to be improved. We expect more enjoyable experiences on the trails, including improved views, reduced conflicts, development of a variety of trail challenges to choose from, and improved wayfinding. We also expect to increase the designated trail mileage overall 
and we expect the new system to lessen threats of resource damage. We also expect the trail system to be physically sustainable in that trails will be placed and designed to tolerate erosion and traffic better, and those that do not will be restored to natural conditions. We hope that the new trail system will be socially sustainable so that desired connections, access, and experiences are provided and therefore limit problems with social trailing, and we expect improved managerial sustainability that the new system will require less ongoing maintenance and therefore be less costly to maintain. This slide shows a map of our existing trail system. This slide shows a map of our proposed trail network, including existing trails, proposed trails, and proposed facilities. We plan to increase the trail mileage while ensuring protection of our natural and cultural resources at the park. To see a more detailed map, check out our story map linked in the video description and shown on the screen. I'll now talk about where we are in the process of developing this plan, what we have accomplished so far, and where you can expect the effort to go next. This slide shows a general breakdown of the plan's process into three phases. The first phase is complete and involves the identification of the problem and thinking forward about what we want the part to look like in the future. During this time, we had focused conversations with key stakeholders representing a variety of user groups to better understand their visions and desires for the trail systems. The second phase is where we are now. With the help of our staff assessing areas on the ground as potential trails, we have assembled preliminary trail design strategies. We are seeking your review and comment on these strategies. Decision making has not occurred at this phase. As I mentioned earlier, even though there is a lot of thought and effort in the trail designs that the park has presented and are now under review, they are not final and they are lacking important feedback from you about how you use the existing system and how you would like to use an improved trail system. We need your comments and suggestions. After we collect your feedback and incorporate it into the design, we will consider visitor use capacities of the new system and its impacts on resources. That work will lead us to further compliance and consultation with the stakeholders and ultimately the development of a complete draft plan. There will be another opportunity for public comment and review of the draft plan before it is finalized and implementation occurs. Implementation itself and changes to the trail system throughout the park will take many years and will be dependent upon funding and partnership commitments. This brings us to the most important section in the presentation and the reason we are engaging with you now, your role in helping with the planning effort. In addition to this recording, you can learn more about this plan by exploring two items on your own, our newsletter and our story map. Both the newsletter and the story map provide more information on the desired conditions we aim to achieve at the park and the proposed changes to the trail system to address the need for the plan. The newsletter can be found on our planning website. In addition to those resources, we are hosting two public meetings on August 1st and 3rd from 4 to 6 p.m. at the Warren County Library and Edmondson County Library, respectively. If you are interested in learning more and chatting with park staff working on the plan, please join us at one or both of these meetings. These informal meetings aim to share information about the plan and planning processes, answer questions from the public, and informally gather feedback and perspectives. They will be an open house format and you are welcome to come and go at any time. The planning team will have posters available and will happily answer any questions, listen to your thoughts, and discuss the plan with you in an informal setting. We want to hear your thoughts and opinions on the preliminary strategies now through August 25th, 2023. Comments may be submitted at https colon backslash backslash parkplanning.nps.gov backslash mammoth trails, which is the preferred method. The QR code on the screen will take you to this site. Comments will also be accepted by U.S. Mail addressed to Mammoth Cave National Park, Attention Trails Plan, P.O. Box 7, 
Mammoth Cave, Kentucky, 42259. All mailing comments must be postmarked by August 25, 2023. Anonymous comments and comments submitted by email will not be accepted. Bulk comments in any format submitted on behalf of others will not be accepted. Lastly, you may contact us via email at maca underscore superintendent at nps.gov, particularly if you have any questions about the story map or materials located on the Parks Planning website. Again, hearing from you all is critical for the plan's success. We want to hear from you so we can take your feedback and ideas into consideration in the development of this plan. This concludes our presentation. Thank you for watching, and I encourage you to submit your feedback to us so we can incorporate it into the planning effort. Take care, and I look forward to seeing you all on the trails in the future.